You want to install an Apache server on your computer. You want to make a website and host it from your computer at home. How would you do this? We're going to set up today the LAMP setup, which is a Linux. And we're going to use Apache, MySQL, we use PHP. In order for us to get started, we need to download a Linux version. You have two options. Let's go to ubuntu.com. You go to downloads and you can choose between two things. You can choose between a Ubuntu desktop and a Ubuntu server. The difference between the two is that the desktop has a graphical user interface and the server does not. It's essentially almost the same, but a server can update without restarting and the desktop usually has to restart every once in a while. Main idea, the principle is the same for both systems. So I'm gonna use the desktop because it's easier to explain what's going on. So you use desktop, let's use 18.04. And in order for us to install a server, we need to use a virtual box. Uh, it's a free program. It's a virtual machine program. It's called Oracle VM. You can find it here, virtual box, and download the virtual box for Windows. Let's assume you have installed virtual box. You just create a new, click somewhere, create new, give it a name. Let's call it Linux Ubuntu Web Server. Let's give it the half of your, your memory. Create a new virtual disk now. I choose dynamic allocation, so that means that it has different sizes. It will grow over time and let's give it, give it a max. I don't know what you need, but it doesn't matter. Give it max. Now we have it here in the tutorial. So we go to the settings first and let's make sure that we use, let's say 60% of our CPU, something like that. That's what I usually do. You can choose more, obviously. Don't go into the red. Uh, let's choose a bridged adapter. What does this mean? Bridge adapter means that uh, your router, your local router, will give it a its own local IP address. If you choose NAT, it will be a IP address within your Windows machine. So I personally like it to do a bridge adapter, which gives it a separate IP address, starting with 192.168 instead of 10.0 or something. So I think we are okay. You start the server. This is a running uh, Linux server, clear. So this is what you usually see when you run a server. So that is all. So it's very hard to work on a system like this and especially to show a tutorial. In order for us to make this a little bit easier, we're gonna use the graphical user interface. And sometimes it prompts you like it does now for a startup disk. So search for your downloaded Linux version. I'm gonna use the desktop version today but we're gonna do all the work in a command window. So the same principle would apply to the live server, as they call it, that you can download from the Ubuntu website. But uh, I would like to use a graphical uh, user interface just to show you guys how it works. If you wanna use a server, then you would need an FTP connection. We're gonna do that later. I can show you how to do this and the same principle would apply to a live server. Okay, so we're now in Ubuntu. We don't care about all this stuff, it doesn't matter to us. What does matter to us is that our screen is not full screen and we don't like that. If we press the right control and F, we go to full screen mode, but it does not help us. So what do we need to do now? We gotta go to devices and insert a guest edition CD image. Ah, here, here it is. Software contains intended to be automatic, so run it. Now we need to put on our password that we just created, which will be the root password as well. Install this first and as you see, we are getting a full screen now. So you wanna work in the terminal window. So to get the terminal window, you have to press this Windows logo and type terminal. And let's add it to our favorites to make sure that it stays here. I prefer to have it on the top. That's a personal preference. And as you can see, if we compare it to, it is a little bit the same as you see. The only difference is that we only have one screen here in the server. If you have a desktop edition, you can open multiple new terminals, as you can see. The first thing that we wanna do is allow our FTP program to connect to Ubuntu. We are doing this so it's easier for us to transfer files and stuff like that. And it is the same principle that you need to use to use the server version. One of the first things that we gotta do is make sure that we have a firewall on. We use the command sudo. Sudo means uh, that you want root access. And we want to use ufw, which is the firewall, Ubuntu firewall, ufw, I guess that it means. And then we want to enable it. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Give it your password and we are enabling it. So if you press up, you can have your last command. And one of the first things we wanna do is we wanna allow port 22 and now the rule is added if you want to see your rules 
just type status and you will see that we are allowing port 22 over IP4 and IP6. So now it is open. Then you need to download a program to be able to connect to it. And I think that we're gonna use Bitvice. That's what I usually use. So let's go to Bitvice and we need the client version. So download Bitvice SSH client version here. It's a free program. And once you have installed that, and search here, Bitvice SSH client, and start the client. So you get this screen. Now, what we need to do now is connect to our Linux version. So we need to know our own uh, local IP address. So ifconfig. We don't have that program installed yet, but it's telling us what to do. So we have to sudo app this, press Control shift c to copy, Control shift v to paste. And now we are installing the net tools. That's what we need. And if we put ifconfig, now we get our IP address. And this is the IP address that we need, the inet. And as you can see, we got a 192.168.2.9, which means that the router sees this operating system as a different operating system, just like it has its own connection to the router. We go back to Bitvice and we put that IP address here. Make sure you have port 22. Put your username here, and that's the username that you use in Ubuntu and enter your password. Oh, <laughs> I forgot this program. We need the OpenSSH server. It needs to be installed as well. Now we see this, the SSH2, the keys. If I am correct now, now we have the keys. Now we can log in. Yes, you see? Now it is possible to log in. You can accept and save. And as you can see, some windows just popped up. So we popped up this window and this window. And now we are in Windows, as you can see, but we have a connection to our Ubuntu version. So this would work as well for a server. This is the trick. And here we can transfer files from our PC to our desktop, for instance. Let's just do that for fun. Let's grab something. Let's send this file. Upload it. And it has been uploaded. If we are here, we can do CD desktop, desktop, ls for listing and we will see buildserver.txt is here and if we go back to our ubuntu version we see build server over here so that's how we can transfer the files between the two operating systems so now we're able to transfer files we have a clean installed operating system i hope you guys did enjoy this tutorial i hope you guys learned something new today and if you did let me know by give this video a like and if you are new to my channel man it would so awesome if you would subscribe to my channel because i make these kinds of tutorials every once in a while it's usually about computer science so thank you guys for being here and i hope to see you guys in the next part of this tutorial goodbye all right that was part one in the next part, we are going to start and install the Apache server. So this was the first part. This was the Linux installation part. And the next part would be Apache, MySQL and PHP. PHP, my admin, because you need that to build databases, for instance, to run a WordPress website. Oh, waiting on installations is so boring. And give yourself a good password because easy passwords can be brute forced and we don't want that, especially not for our server. Not 81, not 82, just 80 and 443. This is for the SSL connection and this is for the normal connection. So if it is HTTP or it is HTTPS, which is a SSL connection. 